All right, so let's get into it. All right, great morning, everyone. My name is our Wes Walters, and welcome to another episode of CX in the Morning, Customer Experience in the Morning. On every single CX in the Morning, I bless you with customer service tips, customer experience tricks, and I leave you with gems. And by gems, I mean actionable takeaways that you can implement at the speed of now. You will learn the importance of implementing awesome customer experience and how it affects your bottom line. And that by itself is pretty awesome. And who doesn't want to be awesome, right? All right, so today we're going to talk. First of all, how has everyone week been so far? It's Wednesday's hump day. Everybody all right from last night? <laughs> is everybody all right from last night? Did anybody die or, or did entrepreneurs still rise from the ashes and are still moving forward like it doesn't matter who's in the White House? If you're waiting for someone in the White House to change this country and create jobs, then you are going to be waiting for a long time. Politicians do not create jobs. Entrepreneurs create jobs. Let me say that again. Politicians do not create jobs. Entrepreneurs create jobs. You who are watching, you're the ones who are responsible for creating jobs, not, not uh, politicians. So either way it goes, if you're an entrepreneur, you're going to be okay. All right? You're going to be all right. All right, so today we're going to talk about making your business or your brand obsolete. Let me put that in the... Um, let me put that in there. Making your business or your brand obsolete. What do I mean by that? Um, I literally mean what I say. It's no subliminal message or there is nothing special about what I'm saying. It's literally making your business or your brand obsolete. Now, as a business owner, that should be one of your chores and your goals every single day as you wake up and you think about, you remember uh, back in the day they had, as a, as a Twinkie in the brain, every day he said, what are we going to do today, boss? We're going to take over the world, of course. What else do we do every day? Well, one of the jobs that you're supposed to ask yourself when you look in the mirror every day, what are we going to do today, boss, is put my business out of business. As crazy as that sounds, that is one of the constant things as a business owner, as a manager, or someone at the helm of the organization. Good morning, Issa. How you doing? We're talking about making your business obsolete. And as crazy as that sounds, hey, Hyacinth joined. We're talking about making your business obsolete. And why would you want to do that? Well, hey, good morning, Miss Dorsey. Thank you so much. I'm glad that you had time to tune into the little people. First of all, how is business going? I've been watching the Instagram posts. Everything looks amazing. If you are in, I think, North Carolina, South Carolina, anyway, just go to K, K drop your um your hat your, your your handles in the um in the chat and we can promote it. Um, even to the people on, fam on the family on Instagram, all right? So we're talking about, this is perfect for you too. We're talking about making your business obsolete. Good morning, Paul Williams. We're talking about making your business obsolete. And why would you want to do that? Well, because if you are not doing it, please believe that your competition is trying to put you out of business and make you obsolete. So I was on a cruise. Um, I was on a cruise. Hey, good morning, Nicholas Red. I was on a cruise with my family before COVID. And uh, immediately when we got on the cruise, uh, of course, in great celebratory fashion, we went straight to the bar and uh, we got some drinks, right? And immediately when I got to drink, I was like, what in the world is this? The straw was what's the correct term you could eat the straw the straw was uh biodegradable and you could eat it so it was like like uh, it was like like a, a candy straw the, the the straw was candy right and i was like but the the thing is 
when you all right so uh, miss dorsey's uh, uh k uh kj beauty supply on instagram check out kj uh k j beauty supply on instagram and the, man the images are high quality this sister has obviously took in a uh a social media uh management course because she's doing a great job so check out kj beauty supplies on instagram and follow it immediately all right so anyway back to the drink so we got to the on the cruise and the drinks we were you know enjoying the soaking in the the cruise and you know touring the ship and the straws were candy now with the straws being candy if you're sipping the drink <laughs> the straw would melt before the the uh the drink was over and you know a public cup i don't want to put my mouth on the cup right so i found this very frustrating i'm like why do we have candy straws and this the straws the alcohol or the drink mixture would melt the straws quicker than i could drink the drink maybe they wanted you to <laughs> drink more drinks i don't know but anyway i went to one of the waiters i'm like hey, listen can i get a regular straw and he said we no longer have regular straws on the cruise and i was like what and i'm like okay tell me more because i'm always about why i like to know why and he said, well, because of uh, the environment, you know, whenever individuals are drunk and having a good time, every year there's tons and tons and tons of plastic straws being tossed over into the ocean. And, of course, the wildlife suffers. So immediately I was like, okay, that makes sense. But I told that story because imagine you as a business owner. I want you to imagine now we're talking we're thinking as business owners now you have the contract with carnival cruise line carnival has 23 ships as of 2020 carnival has 23 ships circling the globe and you do such a great job with carnival that royal caribbean says hey you guys have amazing straws we're going to give you the contract as well so you have two contracts your business have contracts with the two largest cruise ship lines on the planet and life is good we would fit we would all say life would be good if life would be good having the contracts for the straws for two of the world's uh, largest um uh cruise ship lines we can agree this would be good right if that's going to be a good place to be for your business type yes or type one if this would be a good place to be for business just type one we can all agree that having the contracts, the straw contracts for all of the drinks for those seven days on a cruise line, it would be a very profitable situation to be in. We can all agree on that, right? Yes or no? If yes, just type one. And I know there's a delay, so we're going to keep moving. I'm assuming that you guys would agree that would be a great contract to have and you would be very grateful. But now, at <laughs> one day an environmental scientist took a cruise and a flaw a straw flew over and she thought about that little dolphin she thought about flipper right she thought about flipper and flip mode and the entire buster rhymes crew eating the straw and she said oh my god we have to save the dolphins we have to save flipper we have to save flipper and buster rhymes and flip mode and everyone and now your contract with the straws has been deleted overnight you just lost your biggest contract overnight so we can see why it's important for you as a day on a daily basis miss dorsey right now when you get off of this live you are constantly thinking of ways to put myself out of business because right now in a basement in wisconsin there is a high school kid who is thinking on ways to put you out of business let's think about starbucks let's think about starbucks I know individuals who have Starbucks every single 
day. I know what you heard. You heard, I know individuals that have coffee every day. No, 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 that's not what I said. I said, I know individuals who have Starbucks every single day. Now, recently, if you frequent Starbucks, Starbucks, let's see, let's share screen. Uh, let me share my screen real quick. Put that over there. So if you're seeing this, so Starbucks went from straws to sippy cups overnight, right? Imagine having the contract for Starbucks. You would say life would be good. Everybody would type one. Having the contract to create the straw, the straws, the straws for Starbucks. We can retire. Life is good. No worries. Easy peasy. Lemon squeezy. And then Starbucks thinks about, huh? Now, of course, the media, <laughs> Starbucks as a company said, well, we're doing this to save the environment. Which is a crockage, which is BS, because <laughs> environmental activists applaud Starbucks news strawless lids because the lids use more plastic than the straws. <laughs> so Starbucks twisted and be like, well, we want to save the environment, you know, you know, all this plastic straws and the lids uses more plastic than the straws but anyway that's not the point my point is you had a contract with starbucks to create the starbucks unique green straws you lost the contract because you were not thinking of ways to put yourself out of business if you as a business owner or a manager or the person at the helm of the organization was thinking like look how can we make these straws obsolete? You would have created the sippy cup. If you as a business owner or a manager or the person at the helm of the organization who had the contract with Royal Caribbean and Carnival Cruise Line, you would have think that, you know what? Eventually throwing all these straws overboard might affect the environment. How can we make this plastic straw obsolete? And you would have created the candy coated straws that melt. And you would have make a great profit because the straws melt and people need to get more straws. So Carnival Cruise Line is probably buying more candy straws than they are plastic straws because the straws melt. And by the way, the kids love the candy straw. Kids are going up to the bar. Let me have a straw, a candy straw. So now are we seeing why it's important, why on a daily basis you should be trying to make yourself obsolete and make your business Absolutely. How many of you guys remember this? All of the, the everyone over 40 remembers this. Everyone over 40 remembers this. Remember these? <laughs> I'm not sure if you can see these, but these are the long cables, right? <laughs> My house, we had like a 60 foot cable. Like, I mean, the cable was like mad long, right? Because you need to be able to, the, the, the cables in the living room, but you were able to go in the bathroom <laughs> and use the phone. Imagine there was a company that had a contract to make extended cables. Imagine 1986, you're doing great, come business is going great. But the CEO never had the foreshadow, never foreshadowed and said, you know what? How can I make this obsolete? Because in about 25 years, there's something called wireless technology that's going to wipe our contract out. Let me know if that's making sense. If that's making sense to you, 
as a business owner, as a manager, the importance of making yourself obsolete, type of one for me. If that's making sense to you. Let's talk about movie theaters. Oh, my camera is tilting. Oh my goodness. Let's talk about movie theaters. Movie theaters. If you were to tell a movie executive that there's going to be a time when your fans are not going to be able to go to the movies, <laughs> they would have been like, what drugs, what drugs are you smoking? There's going to be a time when something as common as going to the movies is going to be obsolete. If the round table of movie movie theaters owners had thought about how can we make our business obsolete they would have invented netflix 25 years ago netflix would have not been something new within the last decade let me know if that makes sense let me know if that's making sense and is it coming through to you why you should make your business obsolete why it's important on a daily basis i'm thinking how can i make this obsolete how can i make this mouse obsolete someone is in a in a basement <laughs> in middle america right now which i'm sure this technology is out there where the mouse is your eyes the time the the, the two seconds it takes to hold the mouse nah that's old technology how can i make this obsolete have the mouse connected to my eyes. If I turn to the right, the cursor moves to the right. If I blink twice, double click. Someone is thinking of putting Logitech out of business with a mouse that's connected to your eyes. And Logitech, if you're watching this, you should be thinking about the mouse that's connected to your eyes that double clicks with the double blink. Because someone right now, uh, matter of fact, it's a high school kid. It ain't an adult in Silicon Valley. It's a child who has an app on his phone that's showing him how to create a wireless mouse that works with your eyes. Look out, Logitech. That's coming. Restaurants. Let's talk about restaurants and support with the theaters. How many restaurants... Would have ever thought that was going to be a time when your customers are not going to be able to dine in. Now, I would say restaurants have pivoted quickly to this. But if restaurant owners, the owners of Darden restaurants and and and, and the, the restaurant chains, fine dining, etc., if they had thought, say, hey, there's going to possibly be a time where our customers are not going to be able to dine in, then curbside pickup would have been something that was invented. 25 years ago. Now, again, restaurants were able to pivot. Well, movie theaters were not able to pivot. Netflix <laughs> is, a, is in a perfect position to capitalize on not, not having movie theaters. To the point where I think, uh, not I think, I know, um, Amazon Prime bought uh, Coming to America too. Because the movie, Hollywood is like, this is not going to be released in the theaters anytime soon. We need to make a, re a return on our investment. Let's sell it to a streaming. I'm sure Amazon probably won the bet, but I'm sure Netflix was buying for it. I'm sure Hulu was buying for it. Um, and Amazon won. So now it's like, we don't need the theaters. We're going straight to streaming. Why is it important to make your business irrelevant and absolutely red your thing you do buttons you need to be thinking right now right now there's a kid a kid not an adult and a kid is on an app in a basement thinking on a app that can create buttons from <clears throat> from across the country and he's going to ship your buttons to people in madagascar for a fraction of the cost and he's going to be able to do it faster and cheaper than you from his smartphone why you should be thinking on a daily basis on how you can put yourself out of business let's bring it i like to tell the story of apple because apple understood this 
before Steve Jobs left, he understood that Steve Jobs launched the iPod. The iPod, P-O-D. It was a million songs in your pocket was the slogan, right? Started the iPod. Years, couple years later, Apple brings out a smartphone, which I'm broadcasting live here on an Instagram on, which is an iPod, but can do more. It's an iPod that you can serve the internet and make calls. Why in the world would someone be so stupid to create a product to eliminate the existing product? Well, because Steve Jobs knew that the little company Google, the little company Microsoft were also working on new MP3 players that were going to possibly make the iPod obsolete. So if anybody's going to make it obsolete, let it be us. And we're going to make it obsolete and we're going to make a new product to replace it. That's how you do it, ladies. That's the gem. You're looking for the gem. I know everybody's here like, what's the gem of the day? That's the gem. The gem of the day, the God, is that you, you are responsible for making your products obsolete. Because if you don't, if you don't, your competition, and that competition might be in your circle of influence right now. They might be your intern. Yes, someone that you're teaching right now is thinking like, I'm about to run him or her out of business. She's so dumb. How could she not see that a wireless mouse with your eyes is needed? How could he not see that you can set up a beauty supply store kiosk that's like a, a snack, what do you call it? A, a, a honey bun, a snack machine. You don't need the whole brick and mortar store. I can put miniature beauty supply stores at Quick Trip, one at the DMV, one at on the court. You remember before Netflix, we had um, what do you call those those boxes where you rent the movies? The um it's like a little red box where you would you would rent the DVD. And this is right before Netflix. It was like a they would be everywhere. They would be at Kroger's, at Walmart. It was a red box, and you could rent. I think it was was it called Red Box? I think it was called Red Box. What's it called? Red Box. Yeah, it was called Red Box. <laughs> it was so it was called Red Box. So right now there's someone thinking that I can create a I don't need to pay the rent and the lease for a beauty supply store. I can invest in the technology to have a beauty supply store. It was called Red Box. The, na the name of the box was the company was called Red Box and they had a red box. Hey, creativity is its finest, right? So Red Box was like, yo, we're gonna put we don't need Blockbuster. I'm going to create Blockbuster in a box. I'm going to make it red so you can't miss it. And I don't have to pay all of the overhead for employees. I don't have to pay for, for the lease. I don't have to pay for uh, Wi-Fi. I don't have to pay for AC. I don't have to pay for heat. All in a box. And I just pay a high school kid who wants to make $18 an hour to change the DVDs out. Pay one person, one employee instead of seven employees and a lease and rent and uh, um, insure, insurance and Wi-Fi and electricity. So Ms. Dorsey, right now, there is someone thinking about how can I create a beauty supply store in a, key, in, in, in a self-made box where I can put them at Quick Trip, at Walmart, at the clubs, at the exotic dancers clubs because they need beauty supply stuff always at the truck stops at the hospitals right at the morgues that's what you need to be thinking about yes i applaud you for having a beauty supply store but your competition is thinking like this why have a lease when i can just pay a high school a college kid to drive around and refill the pink moisturizer. See, if you don't know about pink moisturizer, you're too young. Before I was bald headed and put the waves on, and then you, you do this and you put the pink moisturizer on in the waves. That's old school. <laughs> I would steal my mother's pink moisturizer to make sure, even before the braids, before the waves, 
when I have my hair braided, keep the braids nice and shiny. <laughs> All right, let's keep it moving. Hopefully, this is making sense for you guys why the importance of making yourself obsolete. All right, let's bring it home. Full circle. Smaller businesses, personal trainers. Ooh, COVID hit. Personal trainers were dying. Oh, my God, I can't go to the gym. The good ones were able, not the pink moisturizer. Yes, the pink moisturizer. Yes. Oh, when I used to get my hair plucked. Oh, my goodness. Ask Velona about the pink moisturizer. She knows about the pink moisturizer. She would always put the pink moisturizer. Velona used to braid my hair, right? Anyway, but um, some of the, 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 the uh, personal trainers were struggling. Now, the great ones adapted quickly and be like, hey, we could do this virtually. Now, man, 10 years ago, if somebody was telling me I'm going to pay a trainer, <laughs> I'll pay him to teach me through the computer, I'd be like, what type of crock is this? Now it's the norm. Now the great virtual tra trainers were able to adapt. A lot of virtual trainers went out of business and are stocking shelves at Walmart right now. Yes, I know, I know personal trainers that did not survive the pandemic and had to go back to work. Real estate agents, a lot of the real estate agents who are ahead of the curve were doing virtual tours before. However, there were some knucklehead real estate agents where it was like, I am a more personal person. I need to meet face to face with my customers. And it's all about the people. Now they realize that, oh, maybe this virtual touring thing is not a bad idea. Musicians, I have cousins who are musicians that do, um, that uh, tutor, that tutor students. Now they are realizing, okay, how can I put myself out of business? What if I have, I no longer have feet and I can't drive to the student? I'm doing it virtual. Let me know if this is making sense. See, this whole COVID thing is like a, a fire drill. Remember back in the day, you all had fire drills in school every... I, I was always wondering as a kid, I'm like, am I ever going to experience... This is how you, th you thought of as a kid. I was like, yo, all these fire drills, I just want to experience a real fire, right? <laughs> like, I want to put all of this stop, drop, and roll stuff to, uh, to, to test. I'm like every like so to a point where we would have fire drills so often that literally it would stop like the, the the fire alarm would would ring and be like we go to the restroom I'm like I'm not leaving the building I'm not I'm like I'm tired of these fire drill call me when there's a real fire <laughs> but that was preparation for what if that's what you as a business owner needs to constantly be doing right now doing fire drills what can we do if we lose our top product? We, we lose the contract with Carnival Cruise Lines and no longer produce the straws. How do we pivot? How do we adjust or do we just go under? What do we do if we lose the contract with Starbucks? What do we do if, if we are no longer to serve our clients the way we normally do? This is a fire drill. This is what you... As a, listen, if you're a business owner, this is what you have to be doing daily. I'm an editor. I'm an editor as by trade. I went to school for television production and film. Before I started school, you needed the, the applications that would edit Hollywood movies. Only individuals in Hollywood studios had this application. Then Final Cut, then Apple released the uh, application that just changed the world. It was called Final Cut Pro. Final Cut Pro gave, and my camera is gone again. Final Cut Pro gave Hollywood, give creators all of the tools that Hollywood creators have and Hollywood studios had and put it in a box that you could put on a desktop computer. Change the game. Apple was like, no, 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 you don't need to go to Hollywood to make independent films. You can do it right on your laptop. Forward thinking. <laughs> now you can edit movies on your phone. 
thinking ahead. How can I, how can I put myself? I saw them. I'm like, look, this editing thing, first of all, I can't keep up with these young kids coming fresh, fresh out of SCAD and Arts Institute of Atlanta. I'm like, I need to get out of this stuff. I need to teach customer service. <laughs> I am not going to be able at 40, be able to compete with these 18 year olds, the way an 18 year old mind works. And they're in school, constantly learning new technology. Good luck if you think you can keep up with them. But again, I was forward thinking. I'm like, look, how do you reinvent yourself, Wes? Ah, customer service. I'm playing. But really, you can edit um, videos on your phone right now. Uh, let's bring it home. Let's, let's bring it home. So my point is, again, hey, one last thing. One last thing. One last thing. Where is it? Here we go. One last thing. Talking about video. Let me share my screen one last time. So here we go. This gentleman right here is a camera operator for uh, that, 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 that he's a camera operator for a, a stabilizing camera operator for helicopter shoots for movies. No, probably makes like a thousand dollars a day. His day rate in LA, right? Now, Again, his job, thinking forward, someone, he wasn't thinking about it. He's like, I'm making $1,000 a day. I'm good. His competition was saying, how can we, and I guess you guys can't see this on, Insta, on Instagram, but he's thinking, how can I put myself out of business? He wasn't thinking about that, but his competition was. His job is now replaced with a drone. You could imagine, it's almost like the, the scene in Wolf from Wall Street where, where uh, Leonardo was like, uh, Benny Hannas? Are you kidding me, Benny Hannas? <laughs> this is exactly what it is. Here it is, this guy is making $1,000 a day. The pilot is probably making $2,000 a day, right? A pilot and a camera guy paying $4,000 a day. I mean, two thousand a day, right? It's three thousand a day, and now this director has to can only needs to pay a drone operator five hundred a day. So the pilot job is gone, and the camera operator, the stabilizing camera guy, camera guy job is gone. This, my friend, is why you should be thinking on a daily basis. How can I make my business obsolete? Because if you are not, I assure you that your competition is. All right? Don't want to scare anybody. Let, let's lighten up. Let's, let's leave on a good note. Hey, it's Wednesday, and you're going to have a new president. All right? So don't want to get everybody scared. But no, really, this is what you need to be thinking of. If Ms. Dorsey is still here. You need to be thinking about that. If Red, if you're still on here, you need to be thinking about that. And any other business owner that's still on here, that's what you need to be thinking about daily. How can I make my business obsolete? All right. So that's it. I told you it was going to be short. Uh, 40 minutes, I guess that's short. But thank you guys for tuning in to another episode of CX in the Morning, Customer Experience in the Morning. Thank you for being here, Miss Dominique. Give my regards to Miss Carmen and Mr. Bubba Thank you guys for tuning in. If you need help or assistance with anything that you learned today, no matter of fact, take these gems. The important, the, the real purpose of the show is to take these gems and implement at the speed of now. So don't turn it off. And be like, ah, that doesn't apply to me. You will be that person who used to create extension cords for phones in two years. It ain't going to take 25 years. The new change for, to wipe you out is coming in the next two years. Because here's a little fact. You can Google this. All of the information in the world doubles every 12 days. You can imagine that. All of the information in the world doubles every 12 days. Uh, but yo, since uh, since you do videos, you should always have uh, work videos and, and is wait what? But yo, since you do videos, you should always have work. Videos is recession proof. Okay. <laughs> it 
if that's what you say, that's what truck drivers were saying about, you know, you know, truck driving is always going to be here. That's recession proof. Give Tesla five more years and we'll, we'll, have, we'll revisit this conversation about truck driving being recession proof. Just five years. Because, again, the technology, the information in the world doubles. Not every two years, not every six months, every 12 days. Everything that you know that's on Google, it's doubled in less than two weeks, every 12 days. So as a videographer, and you are my brother, I love you. If you think video is recession proof, yes, video is recession proof. The person doing video is not recession proof. One of the last gigs I did, I was the camera operator. I was running seven cameras seven and it was only one me now five years ago this director would have had to pay seven camera operators a switcher a video engineer and an no i'm telling you seven camera shoot and i was running it with this so if you, yes video is recession proof the way video is captured is not recession proof so you as my friend, I would encourage you to think of ways to put yourself out of business. I gave you the drone um, example of how the drone operator, he thought his job was recession proof right now. Now he's learning how to fly drones. <laughs> but anyway, uh, Miss Michelle Glass, thank you for being here. Miss Dorsey, thank you for, oh, I'm glad you guys liked it. But anyway, if you need help implementing anything that you've seen, please shoot me a DM. Um, I'm Wes Walters on all platforms except Facebook. I'm Wes Walters and Associates on Facebook. But on every other platform, YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, it's Wes Walters. And uh, we can help you implement anything that you saw. You guys go in peace. And I uh, appreciate your presence. And please, brother, listen. <laughs> facts. All right. He said facts. He came around. He was like, hey, facts, Wes. All right. Great. Um, anyway, you guys have a great day. And I'll see you guys on Friday. Peace.